ಡೈಜಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವಾಹಿನಿಯ ಎಲ್ಲ ವೀಕ್ಷಕರಿಗೆ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಹಾಗೂ ಶುಭ ಸಂಜೆ ಮಾರ್ಗದರ್ಶಿ ದ ಎಜು ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ಹನ್ನೆರಡನೇ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ಗೆ ನಾನು ನಿಮಗೆಲ್ರಿಗೂ ಸ್ವಾಗತಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇನೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಬೋದು ಕಳೆದ ಮಾರ್ಚ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ತ್ರಿಷಾ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಉಡುಪಿ ಹಾಗೂ ಡೈಜಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಸಹಭಾಗಿತ್ವದಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಮುಖ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾಗಿ ನಮ್ಮ ದ್ವಿತೀಯ ಪಿ ಯು ಸಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳನ್ನು ಫೋಕಸ್ ಆಗಿಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಅವರ ಕರಿಯರ್ ಗೈಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಮತ್ತು ಅವರ ಕರಿಯರ್ ಪ್ಲಾನಿಂಗ್ಗೆ ಅನುಕೂಲವಾಗುವಂತೆ ಈ ಮಾರ್ಗದರ್ಶಿ ಅನ್ನೋ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮವನ್ನು ಲಾಂಚ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಿ ಈಗಾಗಲೇ ನಾವು ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ಫುಲಿ ಒಂದು ಹನ್ನೊಂದು ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ಗಳನ್ನು ಮುಗಿಸಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಕರೆಗಳು ಫೀಡ್ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗಳು ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸಿಂದ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸಿಂದ ನಮಗೆ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಕೀಪ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ ಮೋಟಿವೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಇವತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ಹನ್ನೆರಡನೇ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದರೆ ತಪ್ಪಾಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಅ ಕರಿಯರ್ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ರೈಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ವ್ಯೂವರ್ಸ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಿರಂಜನ್ ಚಿಪ್ಳುಂಕರ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎನ್ ಎಮ್ ಎ ಎಮ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ನೆಟ್ಟೆ ಸರ್ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ತಮಗೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಇವರು ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಒಂದು ತ್ರೀ ಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಕೆಪ್ಯಾಸಿಟಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ವರ್ಕ್ ಮಾಡಿದಂಥವ್ರು ರಿಸರ್ಚಲ್ಲಾಗಿರಲಿ ಟೀಚಿಂಗಲ್ಲಾಗಿರಲಿ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ಇವತ್ತಿಗೆ ಕರೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫೈನೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟೌನ್ ಅಂತಲೇ ಹೇಳಿದರೆ ತಪ್ಪಾಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ದೇಶ ವಿದೇಶಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಪೇಪರ್ಗಳನ್ನು ಸಬ್ಮಿಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಅವಾರ್ಡ್ಗಳನ್ನು ವಿನ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಸರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜರ್ನಿ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಲೈಫ್ ಲೆಸನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಯಂಗ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಹು ಆರ್ ವಾಚಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಜರ್ನಿ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಸಂಕ್ಷಿಪ್ತವಾಗಿ ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಸರ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಮೈ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಆಗಿದ್ದು ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಮೈ ಫಾದರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟು ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಗೋ ಟು ಲೆವೆನ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ಸ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಐ ಕುಡ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಮೈ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಓ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಷಕ್ಕೊಂದು ವರ್ಷಕ್ಕೊಂತಾರೆ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಡಿಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಟ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಎನ್ ಐ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಓಕೆ ಇನ್ ದ ಇಯರ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಐ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಷನ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದ ಐ ಟಿ ಬೂಮ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಸರ್ಚಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಜಾಬ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ನೋ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಇದ್ರೂ ಕೂಡ ಅದೇನಿದ್ರು ಒಂದು ಈ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಕಂಪನೀಸ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಬಿ ಎಚ್ ಎಲ್ ಬಿ ಇ ಎಲ್ ಎನ್ ಎ ಎಲ್ ಐ ಟಿ ಐ ಇಂಥ ಕಂಪನಿಗಳು ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ಗೆ ಬರುವಂಥದ್ದು ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಗ್ತಿತ್ತು ವೆರಿ ಫ್ಯೂ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಕಾಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮಣಿಪಾಲ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಓಕೆ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಓಪನಿಂಗ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ವಿಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಮೇ ಅಪ್ಲೈ ಅಂತ ಸೊ ಐ ಅಪ್ಲೈಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫ್ಯಾಕಲ್ಟಿ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವ್ಯೂ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಐ ಗಾಟ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಜಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಇಯರ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಪ್ರಿಸೈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಫೆಬ್ರವರಿ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಮೈ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಕರಿಯರ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಎಮ್ ಐ ಟಿ ಮಣಿಪಾಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಓಕೆ ಟಿಲ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ
made a name in the computer science field that time. Okay. Because uh, there were some stalwarts from NITK Surakal. That time uh -huh. it was KRC. Yes, KRC is correct. So uh, they were working there. And uh, I was very fortunate enough to work as a professor mm -hmm. under uh, a legendary, uh, I should say, figure in the computer science field that time, uh, Dr. K. M. Hebar. Okay. Uh, he was uh, a professor at uh, NITK, mm -hmm. now NITK, earlier KREC. Uh, actually, he was an electrical engineering professor, then electronics, then when computer science was started, he became a HOD and he even uh, learned a lot of things on his own. He also used to be the trainer for Intel employees. Oh. So, very I was good. very fortunate enough to work under work him. With him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, in the year 2002, uh, mm -hmm. I was given an opportunity to head the department of uh, computer science at NMIMIT. Wonderful. So, for 10 years, I was uh, head of the department. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also given the additional responsibility of vice principal of the institution. So, okay. from 2002 to 2012, I was a vice principal. Okay. And last two years, I also I took the responsibility of uh, dean academics of the Wonderful, college. sir. Wonderful. In the year 2012, uh, uh, the situations uh, uh, gave me an opportunity to become the principal Prince of the sir. institution. I was a little hesitant uh, whether I will be able to do it or not, but I had a, uh, a strong experience of being a vice principal of the institution. Right. Uh, so, I said yes and then I took over. So, it is already now 10 years since I am the principal of that institution. Wonderful. Uh, and uh, that is the academic Excellent. as well as the professional career. And uh, you mentioned that uh, some research and all that. Right. Uh, yes, of course, till I took over as the principal, mm -hmm. because once you get into the administrative <laughs> it's very difficult to the very job. <laughs> difficult to get into research, but nevertheless, I have not stopped it, okay. but I could, uh, I, I used to take um, uh, PhD students, okay. already 11 PhD students, uh, they got their PhD awarded Fantastic under my guidance. Sir. Fantastic. So, actually, uh, I can say that through them, I learnt a lot, okay. the recent uh, developments. Uh, but uh, it was nice uh, experience at a journey even in the, under uh, research arena and uh, I visited couple of countries to present papers. Uh, I was invited as a resource person to Ritzmeken University Japan in the year 2002. Lovely. For three months I was there with the AOTS scholarship where I was the only one from India to represent. Fantastic. Sir. And um, that actually opened up my uh, you know uh, vision and then I said that Thanks I should sir. really do something in the web based technology because that was the training that was imparted. True. And uh, so, journey went on in the year 2014, uh, uh, maybe because of the support of all my colleagues and the students, mm -hmm. uh, I could uh, set up some good practices in the college and also the encouragement and the support given by management. So benchmarking uh, the global standards. Uh, yeah, too, uh, true. In 2014, uh, I was also fortunate enough to uh, uh, get an award of uh, best engineering college principal yes, sir, uh, I from, uh, yeah, uh, from uh, IST, New Delhi. So, uh, this is going on. Great, sir. Uh, so, it is already now. Uh, 87 to this 34 years of uh, teaching experience. <laughs> Very and memorable experience. and challenging journey. Definitely, definitely. <coughs> uh, students, uh, it is indeed a great pleasure and honor for us to have a, such a resource person with us today. I uh, would like to remind you that uh, it is a live phone in program. So, our uh, numbers are being displayed on your TV screen. Uh, feel free to contact us for any kind of clarification you have with the speaker. So, uh, today's topic is uh, engineering as a career option. Uh, just before we went live, we were discussing about education uh, courses also getting a lot of volatility today. True. At some point of time, you have a great demand for a course. At some point of time, there is absolutely zero demand to be very honest. Yeah. But how do you see this engineering as a career option for today's kids? sir? Yeah. In fact, if you compare various uh, professional courses, mm -hmm. so engineering is one among them. Great. You have medicine, pharmacy, nursing, physiotherapy great. and uh, so many law and all that. Yes. Amongst most of the uh, professional education, mm -hmm. uh, the one that yields quicker results by way of getting an employment, uh, I believe it is engineering. Okay. Even though it is a four year degree program, mm -hmm. uh, the students if they are really good and uh, they are competitive enough, industries come forward and then uh, take them for their job mm -hmm. uh, by the end of three and a half years. Okay. So, last six months predominantly is an internship mm -hmm. where they have been placed and they become a regular employee after their graduation. Okay. And it is not only in India, even in abroad. The same term. Uh, engineering has that particular, uh, you know, edge over other professional uh, uh, programs mm -hmm. uh, because that uh, basically gets lot of uh, employment opportunities for the students. Okay. Having said that, you rightly raised uh, one issue. There is a lot of uh, uh, volatility. volatility. Yes. Uh, some programs, uh, specializations, will be uh, of in a, at a great demand at mm -hmm. some point in time, but after few years, they uh, they do not seem to attract the students. True. 
and uh, actually civil mechanical engineering electrical engineering these are such programs mm -hmm. but uh, that's one part of it uh, it's maybe the industries uh, they look for engineers from that domain who are also it experts right so a mechanical engineering engineer with a lot of it background is even acceptable or preferred these days right compared to a mechanical engineer he, who doesn't know much of the it true so this ups and downs keep happening true uh, and uh, today it field is at the top of the world top of the world true top of the world and it's a role of uh, educational institute to you know understand these changes true and adapt to those changes true right. that's uh, very important mm -hmm. actually only such institutions can uh, you know remain in the race absolutely otherwise uh, uh, many institutions we see that there are no takers for such branches in some of the uh, colleges true and they may be forced to close down such branches okay. But actually, uh, the civil mechanical we call them as green branches, hmm. evergreen branches. <laughs> so there is uh, there is an opportunity. Maybe the ups and downs are there. I am not right. saying that uh, initially, as soon as a graduate <coughs> comes out of those branches, he may not get a salary as high as his peer in IT branch gets it. But it is slow and steady. Right. So if he really does well, mm -hmm. then uh, he need not have to retire. So in one IT, uh, you also would have uh, noticed it. Mm -hmm. At the age of 45, 50, people are fed up. <laughs> true, very true. Yeah. In uh, fact, much earlier than much that. Much earlier <laughs> these to days. that. Much earlier <laughs> to that. But this is uh, these are certain green branches or core branches of engineering. Why so? Uh, the reason is uh, there the work pressure is so much. Okay. Uh, where in uh, IT, IT field, fields. because things keep changing so rapidly, right. unless you keep up to date <coughs> yourself and then you know. Uh, prove to your employer that you can really contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, you will not have a place there. True. So it becomes very difficult as you get older. You know, definitely it becomes very difficult to compete with the the freshers because True. they all with come with all uh, you know uh, inputs. High, high inputs and high enthusiasm. Is sure. True. And True. definitely they'll be accessing the lot of the latest technologies True. in hand. Correct. True. But having said that, mm -hmm. actually present day still IT. Is at top of the world, mm -hmm. and uh, there are very good job opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, but an IT specialist with some domain knowledge of something else, mm -hmm. maybe banking, okay, maybe insurance, ha, okay, maybe automobile, cross industry. Yeah, mm -hmm. he will have great demand. Great. He will have great demand. Wonderful. Yeah. So actually, fantastic uh, beginning, sir. Uh, I would like to throw some light on some of the uh, the major branches we have today in our uh, engineering. Because that's where my students would be really interested to know about the various branches we have and uh, what's the current uh, scenario there. Yep. Like talking about uh, the CS, the computer science. Mm -hmm. Would you like to add something on the computer science? Yeah, uh, even plus two students know a lot of things about what is happening in IT industries these days. Uh, they are all born in this IT era. True. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, <coughs> just knowing a little bit about IT, mm -hmm. some programming uh, uh, experience will not suffice. Okay. The latest thing may be artificial intelligence, the data science, cyber security, there is uh, internet of things. IOT. These are various latest aspects okay. where uh, you require IT background mm -hmm. and also you must know something special on these fields. Okay. So, if a student or if a graduate mm -hmm. has a lot of uh, you know knowledge uh, on these specialized uh, aspects, mm -hmm. then definitely there is a great career opportunities in front of him. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, so, just a computer science without anything okay. will be just another graduate, engineering graduate. Okay. But if I say I am a computer science graduate with uh, say minor specialization or major specialization in cloud computing True. and if I can definitely, if I can uh, for very sure, uh, you know, prove that to the employer, we will have <coughs> a great uh, place there. Toppings in the pizza is very important True. today. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Um, do you recommend any uh, uh, you know, uh, post graduation courses in the CS, post completion of CS? Yes, uh, we do. The thing is, mm -hmm. uh, right now the IT industries really uh, do not uh, look for any post graduates if they get good talent at the undergraduate level itself. That is the <coughs> number one. Mm -hmm. But having said that, a post graduate with a specific uh, you know, in-depth knowledge of a particular specialization okay. because whenever it is post graduation, mm -hmm. it is not uh, general. general, uh, no, general. It is a specialization. Okay. Right. For example, a MTech program in cyber security. Okay. Huh. So he has to study it for two years. Right. Do a very nice one-year project on cyber security. Mm -hmm. 
So definitely he will have lots of uh, openings mm -hmm. as compared to an undergraduate degree holder in computer science. Right. So postgraduate students with some specialization subjects and who have done a real good project work okay. in their second year of the post graduation, mm -hmm. they will have tremendous opportunities. Great. But again, uh, students soon after their undergraduate, if they get a mm -hmm. job in hand, they say that, yes, it's enough for me today. Let me see tomorrow. Getting back to the study mode again would be difficult for many that's, of the students. That's little difficult. Alva? That may become little difficult. Great. Yeah. Equally demanded course uh, next to CS is, I heard, sir, because I am from the commerce background, you have to correct me if I am wrong, is information science, IS. Now, how yeah. different it is? I mean, is it same or uh, uh, why is it coined two different things? Yeah, okay. Uh, let me give you some history behind it. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, we have uh, at international level, there is a professional uh, body called as. Uh, mm, uh, uh, so, just we go ahead, there is one call, yes, can please, we take please, with your please, permission? Yes. yes. Hello? 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 Yes, uh, Margadarshi Karakramik is Swagat Stai Dari. Yar Matar Tirudu, Yelinda Matar Tai Dari. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Sanita Upadhyaya. Okay. From Shirva. Yes. Shirva. Heli, Nama Karakraman Ota Idira Niu? Uh, yes, watching. How do? Okay. Not okay. Heli, Nima Prashna and Nima Resource Person. Uh, please, yeah, please connect. Yes, you can. Uh, he is hearing you. Please tell. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chiplunkar. Good evening. Yes. Uh, I'm Mrs. Anita Upadhyaya from Shirwa. Mm -hmm. So just highlighting, I want to highlight on the pathetic condition of students mm. who are totally confused actually and are wondering what was their aim and where they have literally landed. Mm. Now I actually want to ask why is this happening in the sense they, they have their own choices, they have their dream but because of this, uh, I mean the ranking system and all that, they're mm. not able to get what they really uh, they want to pursue. And ultimately they are taking something else and they will be proving in that that is later. So what do you think, why why is it happening so? Yeah, yeah it is a good question. Uh, actually when there are more opportunities, more choices, confusion is bound to happen. That is point number one. Okay. So a student or a parent of a student, uh, soon after plus two, uh, they must have a clear objective, I would like to do this once I uh, join a professional uh, uh, you know life. It could be IT, it could be non-IT, it need not be in, I mean engineering also, it can't be something Any else process. also. Right. So, yes. it is a general answer what I am giving. When there are more yes. options, definitely confusion is going to come in. But in order to overcome that confusion, uh, a student or a parent of a student must have uh, had uh, enough uh, you know study made about the professional uh, life later on. And then they must say that yes, amongst these three or four branches of engineering or whatever course it is, I would like to uh, pursue my higher education. That is point number one. Second one is uh, adding to this particular choices, what I just now mentioned, even the types of entrance examinations that a student has mm. to face right. soon after his plus two. So many. We uh, talk about CET, we talk about Comet K, we have JEE, different universities have their own entrance examinations. So, for that actually now central government has started. Uh, something this year saying that at national level they would like to go in for a single entrance examination mm -hmm. for all undergraduate program. So far they have been doing it for medical only need. Right. Uh, but it will take yeah. some more time because uh, definitely in a very uh, vast country like India, uh, everybody agreeing to certain things, uh, it does not happen overnight. True. But that is a good move. Having right. said, basically these are the two reasons. One is lot of choices, too many entrance examinations, student become uh, you know, confused what to take, but if he is determined about what I want to finally achieve in my life and accordingly he can choose the courses and finally whatever he chooses, I believe he has to do it with love. So, every course for that matter is good, there is nothing like good or bad course, everything absolutely, is good. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yes. When it comes to liking also, sir, <laughs> I think they have to, I think they have to, you know, uh, 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 they have to think it well before. Even in, in high school level only now students are getting ready for NEED, JE and all. Mm -hmm. So what, as you said, if they are thinking after PUC, would it be late, sir? Yeah, it will be very late. It will be very late. Yeah, yeah, that's what. True, yes, true. Yes. Yes. Thank you, uh, Anita, for calling. Uh, it was pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, that's the uh, valid point uh, many of the parents have today. Uh, the competition is also so tough. Tough. Right. So uh, the student may sometimes, uh, you know, if he doesn't have plan A or plan B, probably you will be highly disappointed. True.
What do you say? Yes. Alba. That's uh, Kandita. Great. Mm -hmm. So before the call, we were uh, uh, talking about the IS. You were supposed mm -hmm. to say a small yeah, history yeah. about IS. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. So there is a professional uh, body at the international level, mm -hmm. which actually defines various uh, courses in IT related domains. Okay. So there is something called as computer science. There is something called as information systems. Okay. This is at the international level. Okay. But when a couple of years back, maybe a decade or two decades back, when uh, universities in India, they started uh, offering these courses on computer science and then variations in computer science, they looked at all that because we have uh, papers to show that they actually have gone through all that. Okay. Uh, but the demand for such courses in India was increasing. Mm -hmm. So, if you come out with two different courses, actually information system is very different compared to computer science. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, they said that, but everybody wanted computer science, computer science. but <laughs> there are no such seats available. Correct. So, some of the universities, they said, okay, we'll change the name, but <laughs> finally it's one and the same. One and the same. So, actually the employers know about it, employers of the graduates know about okay. it, parents know about it, even students know about it. Mm -hmm. There is no much difference between computer science and information science. Okay. But if you go to the western countries, mm -hmm. there is computer science and information system where they basically uh, give inputs in information system applicable to domain. Got it. For example, financial services. Yes. Huh. The entire right. course right from day one pertaining to financial, pertaining to financial yes. and the IT solutions for that. Great. Or it could be systems analysis. Great. Whatever it is. But here, unfortunately, that uh, division is not there. It's all one and the same. Right. Uh, CES Mathe IS Bagena Mata Dibri. We have uh, Dr. Niranjan with us. Sir, domain trend it's common we agreed to it also. Uh, one such trend uh, I saw that in the uh, ENC, Electronics, uh, Electronics and Communication. And communication. Yes. Idu, uh, probably a decade back hmm. was in the full peak. Yes. What do you say about it? And uh, you I think belong to uh, the yes. ENC. Yeah, yeah I am an ENC graduate right. and then migrated to MTech in Computer Science. So, okay. I have seen that <laughs> as well as this. this both. <laughs> and as you rightly put it, actually Electronics and Communication was mm -hmm. at the top of uh, uh, all uh, branches. Okay. Even today, it's uh, soon after IT, ENC is counted. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, uh, basically ENC industry, electronics industry or communication related industries mm -hmm. is also seeing lots of changes, mm. lot of IT applications, IT driven products okay. are being developed. Right. So, IT is required even for ENC graduates, Right. that is required. Uh, there is a, a feeling in the minds of the students mm -hmm. uh, that uh, electronics and communication is little tough compared to computer science. Oh, it has, is that so? Uh, may be true. I am not uh, saying no actually mm -hmm. because there is a lot of mathematics involved as compared to computer science. Oh. But one great benefit of uh, being an electronics uh, and communication graduate mm -hmm. is that he will have multiple options in front of him after his graduation. Okay. He can get into IT. Mm -hmm. He can continue in electronics domain, okay. product uh, VLSI and uh, fiber optics and all that. Mm -hmm. He can get into communication part of it, okay. satellite communications. Huh. So, there are a lot of options in front of him. Mm -hmm. uh, no doubt compared to computer science, people may find it a little difficult if they are not very good at um, mathematics. Right. Uh, but mathematics is a very core thing of an engineering. Without mathematics, certain things you, you cannot prove. Alba. Okay, That is uh, required. True. So, those who are really good at mathematics, my suggestion is that they must take electronics and communication. Great, wonderful. Uh, because they will have very bright future because they they have lots of options in front of them after they graduate. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what are the options available post ENC, sir? What yeah. uh, PG courses are available yeah, to there them? There are uh, courses like uh, VLSI design, Okay. Uh, there are courses like digital communications. Even okay. I was talking to you about cyber security. Okay. Students with electronics and communication background can get into that. Oh, Wireless that? communications. Okay. Yeah. Uh, even uh, uh, the data science courses, any engineering student can get into postgraduate of data science. Okay. Because data science basically talks about uh, uh, having a huge amount of data uh, obtained from some experiments or uh, over the uh, several years by observations and then uh, basically uh, uh, analyzing that particular data. Okay. So, even in electronics industry mm -hmm. for that matter, uh, there could be lot of data available in a process, electronic process, okay. electronic uh, device development process. Mm -hmm. So, that analysis will finally result in uh, newer inventions because they would have seen a particular trend and that trend may not continue because of certain device characteristics. Okay. 
So, data analysis plays a very important role even in electronics communication domain. Great. So, with that background, uh, one can get into multiple postgraduate uh, programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Choices are very many. Very many. Very Alba. many. Very okay. many. Yeah. Embedded That's systems. That's one uh, great VLSI, advantage for uh, ENC. Electronics and great. Wonderful. Sir, as a commerce background uh, uh, student or a faculty now, I always presumed that, you know, there is a country like India, mm. there is a huge transformation possible in the infrastructural field. Yes. Which I always thought, so there is a huge demand for the civil engineering courses. Yes. But also, having also worked in one of the engineering colleges very recently, mm. And um, by my understanding, I see a lot of this uh, volatility in the civil especially. Yes. The takers are absolutely nil mm -hmm. and some of the colleges, if I'm, uh, you may agree, have shut down their courses on civil engineering. Yeah. Uh, can you throw some more light on this? Why is so? Because to match with the industry standards, hmm. you need to really have a strong civil engineering base in our country. Yes. What do you say? Yeah, infrastructure development is a continuous process. Right, absolutely. And a couple of years back in Gulf countries, actually it was at a peak. Okay. Even today it is happening there. Mm -hmm. Even in India now infrastructure uh, projects, big time infrastructure projects mm -hmm. have been taken up. And they require really very qualified civil engineers with lot of exposure to latest trends in civil engineering. Absolutely. It could be geotechnical uh, engineering, mm -hmm. uh, earthquake engineering. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, these are and uh, tunnels. You, we, hmm. we have heard exactly. about lot of uh, huge tunnels True. being constructed. Yes. Uh, construction of tunnels and study about uh, uh, the, 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 they are basically the life span and all that. It is not that easy. Everything requires an IT uh, solution. But where does the data come from? The data comes from various sensors may be mounted on a wall of a tunnel. So, a civil engineer these days, he cannot say that I have studied civil engineer engineering. So, I know how to uh, prepare concrete mix and that is not sufficient. Okay. He has to go one step ahead. Mm -hmm. Structural engineers are in a great demand. Okay. Actually, there is scarcity of structural engineers. Oh. So, after doing a civil engineering, if a person goes in for uh, higher studies in structural, I am taking structural engineering, he will have great demand. In fact, uh, I can quote uh, example of my own college. Mm -hmm. uh, we have M Tech in structural engineering okay. along with the six other M Tech programs. That is the one which has great demand. Even okay. construction technology, we have been talking with the companies, they say that we want civil engineers, but who are really different, who have some additional skill set uh, okay. in that particular domain. So, you also mean to say there is a lack of awareness about this? Lack students? of awareness about that. Alba. And uh, when uh, I was talking to some of the employers uh, of uh, civil engineering graduates, many civil engineers, they also opt to go out of the country. Yeah, uh, as you said, there is a huge demand outside. There is a huge demand outside. Uh, within India, now it is picking up. Okay. Uh, we all know that basically the South Indian state, that to Karnataka, mm -hmm. uh, we always say IT, IT. Right. Uh, it has helped us a lot. True. No, doubt no doubt about, about it. it. <laughs> no doubt about it. But uh, if at all you go to North Indian states, mm -hmm. if you go to Northeast, uh, students' options would be civil first, then IT. Not that they are not aware about IT, but they have seen a lot of Ready. infrastructural Hello. projects happening there. Great. Yeah. So, I think uh, uh, as an education institute, first we need to create this awareness that True. still this is a big industry that is coming yes, up in the coming yes, years. Yes, yes, yes. I find the same trend in the mechanical as well. Yeah. Uh, we are moving towards industrial revolution 4.0 and 5.0 in the coming years. Yeah. Uh, again, now the industrial revolution and uh, the volatility in the mechanical is not mm. matching at all. Yeah. What do you say? Uh, again, mechanical is a green branch or a very core engineering branch. Uh -huh. Having said that, if we remain where were we earlier in mechanical engineering curriculum or uh, uh, teaching methodologies, mm -hmm. that will not suffice in the current day context. Even the students, if a mechanical engineering student studies only very standard earlier IC engines okay. and uh, uh, various uh, heat transfer technologies, etc., mm, that exactly. will not be sufficient. Okay. Now, the robotics is coming in a big way. Exactly. Mechatronics is coming in a big way. Okay. And these, these are, are part all of offshoots of mechanical engineering. Oh, the offshoots of mechanical engineering. Okay. okay. So, most of the degree programs in mechanical engineering these days have honors provision, mm -hmm. honors in mechatronics, which is an ah. additional some credits a student has to earn along with this mechanical engineering in a mechatronics or uh, maybe in, uh, as I said, robotics uh, or whatever, which, whichever industry 4.0 uh, technologies talk about, VR and AR. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. Correct. Uh, so, these are all possibilities and uh, but uh, an awareness has to be given, 
not only an awareness, there has to be an opportunity in the college for a students to take up such courses. Even students must come forward and take up those courses. Absolutely. Absolutely. All this should happen. In the industries are there readily they are there to take up such graduates. So, you are still quite optimistic about the future very, of civil and mechanical. Very optimistic. <laughs> Fantastic to know. Uh, the last branch I would talk about is, uh, first of all, I would congratulate uh, you and your efforts in getting the approval from the AICT for starting something on the data sciences, yeah. which is the need of the hour today. True. Uh, any sector for that matter, uh, data is everything today. True. So, can you uh, tell a bit about this course? Sir? Yes. Uh, artificial intelligence and data science mm -hmm. that is the title of that btech program okay and uh, as the title signifies there are two parts artificial mm -hmm. intelligence as well as data science okay and you already mentioned that data is everything today absolutely and you keep getting data from different corners true and after this uh, digital expo explosion took place data is coming not in terabytes hexabytes <laughs> it is several tera terabytes <laughs> and Data keeps coming in, mm -hmm. but if you are not able to utilize that data <coughs> to take certain quick decisions, that mm -hmm. data will not have any usefulness. Very true. So, lot of statistical methods are available, which have to be applied and models have to be built. True. In order to come out with certain decision making machine or decision making, uh, you know, module, mm -hmm. which will help in, uh, help the uh, administrators in taking okay. right decisions, right decision, the in right very time. quick time. Absolutely. So, data science is a field wherein there is some amount of statistics mm -hmm. and then computing models building, okay. then programming. All right. So, it is a mix that way. So, they will have exploration to the even the tools like Python or R and yes, all those? Yes. R is a very important uh, programming uh, tool mm -hmm. which is uh, required in data analysis. Mm -hmm. Uh, even uh, there are some uh, uh, commercial tools, R is a free tool actually, right. everybody can use it, but there are some commercial tools like SPSS, SPSS so, there. so yes. many other things are there. Mm. Uh, tools are there, but uh, one has to get into the core of that data science, Great. because use cases is very difficult these days to get in a student life. When I say use cases, mm. if I am uh, trying to find out a solution for uh, some weather related aspect, okay. I need to get a data for last 20 years then only I can predict what may happen tomorrow or in the years to come. Okay. So, I should get a data of that Right. and then I need to, uh, you know, take out the relevant data out of the huge data set that I, I have. know. Mm -hmm. That is a great challenge. True. Unless one knows something about that domain, he may miss out the important data and may end up working with uh, useless data. That should not happen. Mm. So, pre-processing the data, selecting what data is to be concentrated on, that is very important. So, that is where these use cases becomes very important in data science. So, the practitioners from industry, mm -hmm. they will be able to give lots of such use cases. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, engineering college which offers such courses mm -hmm. must have a great interaction with industries Industry. to get such use cases. I agree with you. And then develop on that, Great. build models, right. tell students how models can be built. Basically, when I say models, it is basically mathematical models. Mathematical models. Yes. This also talks about reporting and MIS. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, reporting, MIS, actually the visualization is a very important aspect. Okay. Uh, when you say reporting, uh, I can give a final uh, conclusion of something right. in words, mm -hmm. through charts, Correct. through graphs, pictorial representation. Pictorial representation. Right. It is very easy to True. understand and comprehend. To interpret so also. To interpret. Great. So, visualization is also very important aspect in data science. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. So, now getting into a most important question from the students and the parents point of view. This one trend I have been seeing in the engineering domain, uh, I just want you to throw some light on it. I see students taking one specialization, hmm. but finally getting placed in a different industry. Yeah. Like for example, civil or mechanical, finally getting placed in an IT or uh, chemical engineering student getting placed in an IT field. Yeah. Now, do you, do you support this decision? Uh, yeah, uh, it is both yes and no. Okay. For a graduate, mm -hmm. soon after his graduation, one wants to start earning. That is <laughs> okay. the mindset. That is right. quite natural. Quite there natural. is nothing wrong in it. Mm. So, whatever uh, placement comes on his way, on his or her way, definitely they will take up. These days, most companies, they come to recruit IT specialist or people who have got some IT background. A mechanical engineering student, if he knows little bit of IT, he may get into an IT company, but that IT company may be doing something on automobiles. Okay. Okay. So, he becomes a best fit there. 
Okay. He knows something on, you took the name of Python programming language, which right. is uh, very much talked about these days. Mm -hmm. But if he learns Python, being in the college, and applies or uses it to solve certain problems in automobile domain, okay. he will be the best fit for that particular automobile industry. Got it. So, he is a mechanical engineering, hmm. but he has that IT, IT uh, knowledge about it. Okay. So, uh, a student getting into an his own core company, hmm. of course, there is always preferred, okay. but options and chances are not that great as compared to IT related companies. Oh, okay. In IT, the job market is uh, too, uh, too big. I mean, uh, out of, uh, I Ocean. think, yeah, 100 jobs available, maybe 90 jobs are in IT domain. It's oh, so very huge. Very huge. Another 10 jobs are in core domain. But out of this 90 IT related domains, jobs, maybe 50 percent of that is application of IT to a particular domain of mechanical engineering, structural, civil engineer, electrical, vehicle designs. Okay. So, it is an electrical engineer, Auto but he has to do the vehicle design, battery management, where he uses lot of software. Oh, okay. So, such inputs he has to acquire during his, uh, you know, college days, so that he becomes best fit for that particular industry. But how do you observe this in the long run? For example, uh, somebody into mechanical, into IT, of course, some relation there. But then in the 10 years, 15 years down the line, how his professional balance would be? Uh, no, if we see some uh, uh, people at uh, helm of affairs in various big mm -hmm. organizations, mm -hmm. uh, those which started about 20, 25 years back, I believe majority of them are not from IT background at all. They are not? They okay. are not. Okay. He may be a mechanical engineer, he may be an electrical <laughs> engineer, okay. but in the course of his professional life, he has picked up those, uh, you know, inputs. He is also able to guide his juniors in what is good, what is bad, what is to be done. So, as one moves up in his uh, professional career, uh, it is not that educational background or that degree that he has uh, obtained matters, mm -hmm. but actually how well he has utilized whatever he has learned there in the industry to grow forward. Because you rightly uh, pointed that because my next question was that, because most of the western countries today, they are going from uh, degree based education to a skill based education. True, right. Like people like, uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. or Elon Musk, they have already told that I do not need, uh, you know, your degree. Yes. I need a particular skill. So, how do you see this trend in India, sir? It is actually picking up mm -hmm. uh, in the very recent past. So, earlier uh, in most of the colleges, uh, the teaching uh, curriculum was such that we, uh, there used to be 80, 85 percent theoretical aspect being taught, mm. another 15, 20 percent practical hands-on experience. Now, the scenario has started changing. Okay. It is coming 60, 40, 60 theoretical, 40 mm -hmm. practicals. But if you go to western countries, some of the countries like Germany and all that, mm -hmm. there even an undergraduate student, he spends weekly maybe maximum 4 to 5 hours in a theory class. Rest of the time, he will be busy solving an actual problem so on ground. So real life situation. Real life situation. So, that is coming up in India also. Great. And uh, the need of the hour. That is the need of the hour. Actually, a skill, we can say a lot of things about uh, building skills, but if the opportunity is not given to the student to build that skill, he only finally he says that I have got this certificate for this skill and Absolutely. aspect, but he would not have tried his hands Absolutely. in uh, solving any particular real time problem. Yeah, wonderful. A uh, lot of students and parents have posted this question to me, especially from the engineering background. Mm -hmm. uh, I raised this question a couple of uh, minutes ago, maybe before the break. Uh, while they complete their graduation after that, mm -hmm. um, they always ask me whether it is better to get into a job market, work for some time and then get into post graduation or complete your post graduation and then go to the job or whatever further options lies. Yeah. What do you suggest the trend? Mm, <coughs> it is that candidates preference. Okay. Uh, the thing is some would like to earn because some students would have uh, uh, spent huge money in uh, their undergraduate courses. Exactly. They would have borrowed right. loan from the bank. Absolutely. We have been seeing that. Yes. So, even though he is interested, he is capable to pursue his post graduation, mm -hmm. but his immediate uh, requirement would be to, you know, uh, complete those. Dispose of the loans. Uh, yes, dispose of the loans. So, he has to work. So, even if he has chance to go for higher studies, he may not be able to. True. Okay. So, that is one aspect. But if a student does not have such compulsions mm -hmm. and if he is really focused. Okay to do some higher education that is M Tech in case of engineering, the next uh, higher education is M Tech. 
Do you have ME also? Huh? ME? Uh, ME, but in most of the Indian universities now they have stopped giving ME program. It oh, is MTech. It? It's, it's MTech. Yeah, okay. It is MTech. Uh, then taking that MTech soon after B is more preferred. Okay. If he is not, uh, uh, you know, having that urgency of getting into a job and then start earning. True. Uh, so that when he completes his uh, post graduation, he would have had one year of project work experience in an industry and it is for a particular industry or a particular segment of industries. So, he will be better uh, you know uh, expected or he, he is better uh, uh, compared to an undergraduate uh, student who has uh, got a degree in uh, say maybe mechanical, but if he is a postgraduate student in mechanical, undergraduate in mechanical and postgraduate in robotics, mm, okay. definitely he will have better chances. Great chances. Yes. Right. But having said that, you know. So, you uh, leave it to the student's option to decide. Uh, it. Yes. Yes. And some also will have a problem, you know, once the study uh, preference is broken mm. and they work and take a break and it is very difficult for them to get back to the study mode. That is also <laughs> there. Some students while working, they also do part time studies. Okay. Uh, that is preferable. Uh, that is preferable, <laughs> but there will be huge pressure on them. Both sides, you know. Yeah, because even to do the IT boats. companies these days, they say work from home. We <laughs> all have seen True. how, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, very… Uh, uh, we thought it is convenient, but you will <laughs> agree, it is they end up working more otherwise <laughs> than how they work in the office. <laughs> Along with that, if they are also asked to do some postgraduate, <laughs> I think, I do not know. So, uh, quite often I have seen this slogan, be a job providers and not a job seekers. <laughs> And I see lot of lot of engineering students today getting it, getting up into a entrepreneurship and startup at a very very early age. Yes. So what's your views on that? No, that that's a good trend actually. Mm -hmm. the India especially needs entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Having said that, it is not that easy mm -hmm. to get into entrepreneurial mode also. I know. Uh, there's a lot of risk one has to take. True. Mm, but if you delay your decision of becoming an entrepreneur then the challenges, difficulties also may be more. Mm -hmm. But most, many students what they do is they get into an industry because in the college what happens is they study technology to mm -hmm. the core. But being an entrepreneur it is not only technology. Okay. He must know the market trend. Absolutely. He must know what are the external forces working, having an impact on what he uh, thinks that he can uh, you know produce and market. Very true. Financial aspects, mm -hmm. he may not be aware at all. Absolutely. So, these are all the things he must learn for which uh, some students take one or two years mm -hmm. working in a company, learning all that, then, then getting into an entrepreneurial mode. Okay. No, that is a good step. Otherwise, without knowing any of that, if you say that I have a great idea in mind, I would like to do some entrepreneurship, uh, it is not risky that, it is a lot of risk involved. Right. But that's a good trend. Uh, that's get a good trend. Entrepreneurs, you know. I think uh, Anitte, if I were to take this, you have a beautiful setup called uh, Atal Incubation Centre, true, true. which will encourage all these young entrepreneurs to take up their idea and nurture, and you know, even uh, try to take that to the next level. Next level, yes. Right. Actually, the prototypes mm -hmm. they can build, they will get uh, some mentorship, they will get the financial assistance, mm -hmm. uh, and also we have about uh, 12 to 15 startups physically present in the college. Fantastic. Through Atal Incubation Center. Fantastic. So, students can see what is it that they are working on. Great. Okay, they will get a feel. They do some uh, hands on experience. Hands on experience. Mm -hmm. Some are interns there only. Fantastic. So, uh, all these things really help them in taking a decision whether I really would like to go into entrepreneurial mode or join the work uh, mode. Yes. So, I think uh, we had a wonderful discussion uh, covering all the major points as requested by the students and the parents. We are the fag end of the program. Your final message to the students who are watching you, sir. Yes. Uh, students, basically, uh, those who have completed their 12th, mm -hmm. aspiring to get into professional career, professional uh, courses. As I said earlier, all professional courses are good. There is nothing like this is good, that is bad and all that. But since today I am here to talk about engineering, again in engineering there are lot of options. If you look at uh, All India Council for Technical Education's process handbook, there are more than 250 undergraduate engineering programs available across the country. So, choices are there, whatever you get, whatever you opt for, if you get it, fantastic. Even if you miss it narrowly, does not matter, you start loving that. Every course is good as I said, if you do well in your career and it is not only studies, outside the classroom you need to involve yourself in lot of uh, you know personality development programs, you need to do some small innovative projects, internships, 
societal internships these this they are been talked about very much True. so if you involve in all this i believe at the end of 3 and 1/2 years as i said not even 4 years definitely it's very sure that you will get a job in hand if you would like to get into entrepreneurial mode work for one or two years get into that entrepreneurial mode you will have a great future ahead of you fantastic undoubtedly without hesitation i would say this was the finest discussion i had ever had you know the very short span of time was able to cover lot of aspects about uh, engineering i'm very sure my students and the parents who are listening to this program have gathered enough information in hand to take the decision next on behalf of all the viewers parents and students i extend a heartfelt thanks to dr niranjan chiplankar for traveling all the way from karkala thank you so much sir indeed a great pleasure having you thank here thank you very much thanks for the opportunity all the thanks to the students and parents who are watching all this program uh, many more episodes on the way keep watching this space nirantara suddhi mattu mandaranjanga nodta iri daiji world